Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RNA Music. Ha ha ha. Double RNA shirts. Double RNA. In 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio. Deep in the heart of Texas, which is where we are. <laughs> and it's time for another Ask RNA episode. Yay. Let's get into it. That's right, it's another episode of Ask RNA. If you are new here, I'm Ryan. And I'm Angela. And we own a music store together. And we teach lessons to kids and all kinds of great musical stuff. And we're husband and wife. And we're married. Yes. We are married. Yeah. For 20 years. <laughs> we just celebrated our 23rd mm -hmm. first date anniversary last night. Yeah. Fantastic. KFC and Star Wars. Mm hmm. Amazingly it romantic. Great. It was. Yes, we had the whole theater to ourselves. <laughs> we had a whole theater to ourselves. Because <laughs> that's how we roll. On we booked a whole theater for just me and her. That's what we do. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we shoot videos like this video. We answer questions mm -hmm. from viewers all over the world. Of course, we have videos on boxing gear, teaching yeah. lessons, yeah. that kind of stuff. If you're new here, please subscribe, hit the bell. If you're a regular subscriber, go ahead and hit that bell. You'll get notified of all our new videos. Yep. And uh, yeah. Oh, there's all the book, bookkeeping, housekeeping duties. All of it. YouTube, housekeep, housekeeping. <laughs> you want me a fluff below? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Now we're gonna answer questions. All right, okay. so let's get right to that. First question, Big Johnson, hashtag Falcor. Oh, what? What is your favorite string gauge String gauge mm -hmm. on your electric guitar. Mm -hmm. I can't even talk this morning, mm -hmm. which is not different than any other morning. Uh, my favorite string gauge. Well, it kind of depends uh, on tuning, right? So if right. I'm in standard tuning, you know, mm -hmm. like E E A D G B E, mm -hmm. Eddie Eight Dynamite, Goodbye Eddie. Um, nowadays, I like to play nine and a half, which is nine point five to forty four. Mm -hmm. uh, Diderio makes uh, that. Uh, there's maybe other brands who make a nine and a half. Yeah. But I really enjoy the nine and a half. So I used to play yeah. tens mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. And I've got to where it's just easier on the hands to go a little bit lighter. So yeah. the nine and a half feels great. I think mine are nines on yeah. mine. Mm -hmm. Why work so hard? I know. Why work so hard? Nine and a half for standard tuning. If I'm tuned down a half step to E flat, mm -hmm. tens. Tune down a half step. Yeah. I like that. If I'm doing any low, like drop C sharp or drop D even, I'll use 10 to 52s. If I'm gonna do like drop C sharp mm -hmm. or drop C tuning even, right. that's about as low as I have to go. So it kind of depends on the tuning of the guitar. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I'm in standard tuning here at the shop, teaching lessons. Right. To beginners. Correct. Um, so I really like the nine and a halves. Mm -hmm. If you haven't mm -hmm. tried them, you should try them. They're great. Of course, I like the NYXL. We are dealers for Diderio. Right. right. Sign over there. NYXLs oh, right are great. I can't see myself, so I don't know what I'm pointing oh, to. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to look at the lens, anyways. Yeah. Don't look at the screen. I'm look at the to. lens. <laughs> so, yeah, I like nine and a halves for standard tuning. Yeah. And for acoustic guitar, I like 11s. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. There you go. Great question. And yeah, I think my acoustic, I, I use nines on my electric. I think my Gibson Epiphone is nines, nines. Mm -hmm. or nines, mm -hmm. is nines. On so, Angela's Les Paul. Yes, um, are nines. And then on my acoustic or tens. I think you put I, pretty light. I did. Yeah. But it's a acoustic. short scale, like parlor style yeah. guitar. Yeah. So she's using tens on her acoustic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thanks for the question, Big Johnson. Yeah. And the hashtags. All right. Next question. LD. What? what? LD. I wonder what LD stands for. I was trying to think of something. I was trying to, my brain just I was trying to think of something, too. I like. Yeah. Uh, less Delaware. Fail. <laughs> less Delaware. Yeah. Don't um, say less Delaware because somebody uh, might be from Delaware. Oh, that, they might get offended. Yeah. Oh, man. Unless Sorry, you Delaware. like Wayne's World and then you can respect their Delaware reference. Hi. I'm. We're in Delaware. Delaware. <laughs> Which is a beautiful state filled with beautiful people. Beautiful people. The great state of Delaware. Yes. <laughs> what are some albums that you feel can be listened to from start to finish without skipping? 
Ooh. Good question. What's a what's an album that you can listen to nonstop? Because you're picky. I'm very picky, and I don't think I have a album. A single album a that single you can album. listen to straight from beginning mm-hmm. to end. Okay, what about uh, okay? When you let's were, say when I was younger. When you were a kid. When I was a kid, this is gonna sound really Miss like, Jackson. If you're nasty. No, actually, there was lots of songs that I would. <laughs> like, tape. I would tape it. <laughs> Fast, yeah, forward. fast forward that sucker oh, um man. tape tape yeah hard. because there was only like three songs on the um whatever i don't even know the name of her album with you know control and control. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah rhythm nation rhythm nation yeah look at you here you go i you know, know my janet jackson, jackson early jackson records um I had two sisters when i was little there was a stevie wonder album like record album that we had that i could listen to straight through I can't remember. It's the one when he's laying on these rock on the rocks, and he has his hair in like cornrows and beads, mm-hmm. and he's like in this bohemian, like African, you know, dress, ga- you know, garb, robe. Yeah, and um, and I I loved that album, and um, I would just sit there and I play it on my on my um, Sesame Street record player because it played full size albums. Right. I think I had one of those. Um, that one and um, Herman's Hermits. I can listen to. My mom had the Herman's Hermits, uh, and I listened to that all the way through as a kid. I think those are literally the last ones I've actually listened to. My mom and dad had uh, Study and Share, right? With the beat goes on. Uh huh. That one I listened to that back. To, of course, uh, the beat goes on. I just. <laughs> I memorized where the exact groove was for that yeah. one, and I would just play that one over and over again. But the whole album was actually really good. They had some great songs, and I love Cher's voice back then. Um, and um, Lady Sings the Blues with Diana Ross. Oh. It was the the soundtrack for whenever she played um, uh, Billie Holiday. Wow. And my mom and dad hated that we would ever get that out because it's such a hard movie because she Billie Holiday was you know an alcoholic and right and just there's a rough life and like you open up the cover and it's like this the inside of the cover of the album because you're like you know like this big album and it was like this hallway and in the corner of the album there was Diana Ross like crying oh man like all you know beat up and stuff oh. like in us from the scene from Lady Sings the Blues hardcore and it's yeah and mom and dad are like don't listen to that it's, it's so depressing but Diana Ross's voice from that movie was just like, to me as a little girl, I don't know what it was about her. And like, I was like seven listening, yeah, <laughs> listening, listening to that. To like I was so deep. Brutal. At seven. And of course, then I put on my Sesame Street album and listen to C is for Cookie, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Wow. But I was just curious. And I remember just sitting on the floor, lay, well, laying on the floor because my record player was by my bed on the floor. And I remember just laying on the floor just like, Staring at her picture, and I listened to the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, over and over. Like, but as an adult, there's no album. No, not because there's so many that I just don't. Uh, you just skip over. You know, I that skip. That brings up an interesting thing. I think maybe you have to be a certain age because, like, when we were teenagers, mm-hmm. I mean, CDs came out when we were teenagers. Yeah. But for the most part, like driving in my truck as a 16, 17 year old kid, yeah. it was tapes. Yeah. And skipping songs on a tape That's so players hard. like oh crap, you overshot it. Rewind. Oh crap. We Yeah. To find the exact you know, unless you had a really fancy expensive tape deck where it would it would stop automatically for with Yeah, I never you know. had one like that. So I didn't even know. It was just existed. easier just to let it play. Yeah. Just let it play for this side. Oh, okay. Take tape yeah. out, flip it over. Yeah. And with records, again, you know, trying to like skip song. Yeah, you have to have your finger on the fast forward or the rewind and the play button at the same time. So you were like, yeah, yeah. It's really difficult. Maybe it was just really difficult to skip songs back then. Where nowadays, once CDs came out, you just hit a button, you skip to the next song. Right. And with, you know, iPods and MP3s. Well, records, it was easy because you knew that next groove. The bigger groove. Yeah, you can find it. You can find the you can find the song. So records was easy. Maybe because it's so e- it's so easy now to skip songs, barely an inconvenience. Yeah, so super what, easy. What album can you um, listen all the way through over and over? So there's there's a few. I'm trying to think of recently, like in the last five years, like um, 
So Jeff Loomis's first solo record, which is Zero Order Phase, which is yeah. all instrumental, just shred stuff. I could right. literally play it from the beginning to the end. They're like, <laughs> just be mesmerized. Right. And then his second one, his uh, second solo album, it only had it had like the two songs had vocals, and but I could listen to it straight through and just be like, wow, like every song was just yeah. brutal intensity mm -hmm. of just technical like. How do you even play this? And the drums, how does somebody physically play that stuff? That's right, crazy. Right, right. Uh, so those were the last ones. And then he did Conquering Dystopia with Keith Marrow, which is a similar thing. Very right. aggressive, technical, virtuoso, mm -hmm. shreddy stuff. Yeah. With no singing. So I didn't have to like, ah, crappy singers, get yeah. on my nerves. Or Cookie Monster vocals. Like, ah. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those I've listened to... Um, I'll put, uh, it's the CD in the truck right now. Um, mm, mm -hmm. I know what you're saying, but I can't think of Nick Johnson. Yeah. There Nick Johnson. Again, it's funny for now, for me nowadays, it's instrumental records, which I'm not even a big, mm. I don't really love instrumental guitar stuff. Right. Not really. Mm -hmm. But like Nick's, I'll put it on and just let it play. And I can do that. So as an adult, those are the ones lately that I could just listen to. Full throttle, but full throttle. like as a kid, it was like <laughs> Master of Puppets mm -hmm. on tape, just <laughs> yeah, play it, flip it over, <laughs> play it, um, ride the lightning was that way. Uh, all, most of the Metallica stuff, I could not kill them all, kill them all. I had to pick, there's only a couple songs I really enjoyed off of Kill Em All, mm -hmm. but every other Metallica record, you know, from Ride the Lightning up to the Black album, I could just play. Mm -hmm. And pretty much all the Pantera albums, I would as that at that age, I'm just play them, just let it go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, not so much. I try. Like mm -hmm. there's, you know, well, Alter Bridge. A couple of the earlier Alter Bridge records I could listen to. Nowadays, the more records they put out, I'm like, uh, yeah, it's good, but let me skip to that one song. Right. I find myself now finding one song of a record and just playing that one song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 500 times in a row. Yeah. So, yeah, it's mo mostly like rock stuff. Yeah. But uh, Led Zeppelin 2, mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin 2, whole album. Mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin 4, the whole album. Not Led Zeppelin 1 <laughs> or Houses of the Holy or some of the other stuff. But 2 and 4, Led Zeppelin 6. Mm -hmm. We'll just call it Led Zeppelin. You know, you can put 2 and 4 on back to back. And I can, I can still listen to those. Just let it play without skipping. Right. But. That's me. What do you guys and gals, do you have a record right now today in 2020? 2020. That you can just play from beginning to end and not skip. You, you probably think you can, but put one on yeah. and see if you can do it. Yeah. That'd be a good test. Can you listen to this without, I want to skip, but I can't because Ryan said no. <laughs> <laughs> Great question, Jeffrey. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. No, sorry. LD. LD. Mm -hmm. LD. Yeah. Live in Delaware. Yes. Thanks for the question. That was great. Enjoyed mm -hmm. that one. Next question is Jeffrey Egan. I was getting ahead of myself. Hashtag Falcor. I have a question for Angela. Would you design me a Telly style guitar for your next run of RNA CMG tribute guitars? Nice. Hashtag KTMA. It's not a tribute. Signature limited exclusive dealer run. This is a tribute. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Would I just... Sure, why not? I don't know. Can I? Am I allowed to? Yeah, well, we've already got the next... I've already got the next run decided on, pretty much. <laughs> which is going to be a T-style. But it went... Right. So the, the second run of RNA dealer exclusive CMGs yeah. <laughs> has really already been kind of specked out and, right. and, and done, decided on. So... Yeah. The That's really hard run, because I don't know you. So if I pick out stuff, would it be like... I just like this because Angela designed it. Then sure, yeah. but if it's like, what if I pick the wrong type wood, if it's the wrong finish, the I'll wrong pickups, the wrong you know, you can pick my brain. fret length, fret fret you know, neck thickness. There's so many things that y'all care about <laughs> that I don't necessarily care about. I'm just like it's pretty, <laughs> you know. Well, <laughs> is it pretty? Then be, I like it. To be fair, I think most of it these days is aesthetics. Yeah. And like even with our first run of RNA CMG guitars. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew the pickups I wanted to use and I knew, you know, the woods and the paints, but it was, it's, 
mostly aesthetic, you know. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do the? Do you want to do the third run of? I will design the third run. Okay, you heard it here. So, the third run of CMG mm -hmm. RNA music exclusive. You can only buy them from us. Yes. You can't call we it can, CMG and order it. We can call it the Lala. The Law. We could. Mm -hmm. We could put that on the, the headstock. Lala. Mm -hmm. The Lala. Because it's not Angie. It Don't is ever not. Call me Angie, please. It is not. That is not Angel. acceptable. Angel. <laughs> no. Someone said yesterday, yesterday on the phone, they're like, your wife must be an angel. I'm like, she literally is. <laughs> I didn't tell them your name was Angela, but I was like, yeah. I didn't mention that. I just, yeah. You are an angel. All right. So, yes, Jeffrey, Let's we'll do that. Are you up? Angel. <laughs> In the morning. In the morning. Angel. I do. Every morning. I call <laughs> but yes, Jeffrey, yeah, yeah. I will. Sure. We'll so, the see third that. run, third run of CMG RNA exclusives will be yeah. specked out by Mrs. RNA. Pew, pew. Oh, I'm excited now. We need to hurry up and finish run two so we can get to this. <laughs> uh, thanks for the question, Jeffrey. Next question SF750F. SS. SF. I said SF. SS750F. Yes. Like Super Sport 750. It must mm -hmm. be like a motorcycle. Yeah, sounds like it. Suzuki? Kawasaki? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hashtag Falcor. Do you have much experience with the Dan Electro guitars and pedals? Is this one question? Dang, now it's two questions for sure. Dang <laughs> 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 All right. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with their guitars. I feel like I've played one or two over the years somewhere. Mm -hmm. Have a little bit of experience with their super cheap pedals that they made yeah, yeah. that came right. back that they were like the fab mm -hmm. pedals that came out years ago when I worked at a big box music store that mm -hmm. you know is the devil Satan's playground yeah uh, we sold those there and they were pretty much hot garbage but for like 25 right. bucks it's like what did you expect like what kind of pedal did you expect for right. 20, for 20 25 bucks it's right. not gonna be awesome so the only experience I have with the pedals is the super, super cheap ones that are just hot garbage. Mm -hmm. You know. And I feel like I've played one of their better electric guitars at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. Either at a guitar show or at another music store or something. But not much. Not much. But however, if any of you ladies and gentlemen watching our video right now do have some extensive experience with Dan Electro guitars and or the pedals, would you... Leave a comment below what your experience has been. Share that with us. And Super Sport 750F. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Yeah. And there Great. we go. Next question. Just fun guitar. New question. In my small town, we do not have a black hair shop. Mm -hmm. There are only maybe 14 black people around 11,000 folks that live here. We have some Turkish and Bengali people, maybe about 27 of them. So there is no black hair product shop. Mm -hmm. So my wife has to wait till we visit family in a bigger city to pick up hair products. Do you have a black hair shop in Canton? Oh. All right. Yeah, that's an interesting Good question. question. <laughs> well, Canton is not a population of 11,000. No, we're that's more like 34, 3,300. Yeah, within like the 100. city limits is about 3,500 people. Okay, yeah. Now, granted, we're in the country. It's very rural. So right outside of town, like right outside of the city limits area, but most people live in the country. outside like, outside of town. Like honestly, most places. Yeah, so we have maybe ten thousand people. Our county has about what are we fifty, sixty thousand people? Yeah. In the mm -hmm. county, Van Zant County, Texas. Yeah. There's only four decent sized towns in our county, and each one's got about three thousand, four thousand people. Mm -hmm. But in the entire county or parish or whatever, I don't know how you would what you'd relate that to in England. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably about 50,000 people, but everybody lives out, you know, in, in the woods. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> on a pasture, um, on so, a farm. Uh, and we have quite a bit more black people than 14. <laughs> comparatively. There's more than 14. There's definitely more than 14. Um, my dad moved up here, so we added one. <laughs> we, got, we got 15 now. Your and dad. my sister. So we're basically, my, between my sister and I and my dad, oh, that's man. like two black people. Um uh, you get, you'll get that later. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yes, we have one. There's one well, salon. That's... There's a salon owned by a black lady. Um, and she does both. It's not solely black it's not hair. strictly an African American salon. Because I, yes, I, actually, I think she does strictly do 
white lady's hair. Let's just call yeah. it like it is. Let's not be politically correct because it just wastes time. You said white and not Caucasian. I'm so, <laughs> so triggered. I'm so triggered. Um, <laughs> and I can do both because I am. What? Well, but um, so um, I'm. That's biracial think. privilege. I do have biracial privilege because I can't say these things because it's offensive. But because whatever you're a woman of color, get over it, white man. <laughs> <laughs> I took over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I can't. I just, I just can't. I just can't. Um, but yes, um, the lady will I'll just say, you know, Carol, because uh, you don't know her last name. Um, yeah. She um, did my hair maybe like. Oh, yeah. A long time ago. 16, 17, almost 18 years ago. Because um, I went to her because I wanted my hair relaxed. Where, you know, they put the chemical on your hair to take the curl out of your hair. Because um, uh, my hair, I, and I wanted to cut short. I wanted to cut short and then relax so I can manage it. Because I didn't know how to do, you know, my hair. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and I went to her and I asked her because she was the only black lady. And I asked around. I was like, is there a black stylist here in town? And they were like, well, there's Carol. So I went over there and there was mostly white ladies in her, which was not common you know, if you go to a black salon, you don't see black white ladies in a black salon. So it's like um, you don't generally see a lot of white dudes in a black barber shop, right? Um, unless they really like grew up in that community. Yeah, you grew up in that neighborhood. Um, but so I asked her, "Can you do a relaxer?" She was like, "Oh, I haven't done that in a long time." And honestly, that should have been my first clue not to do that. But, I mean, she did a fine job. She didn't mess me up or anything. She's a wonderful lady. I see her all the time, and we still hug and everything. And it was it was a nice experience. Um, but, yeah, that's about it in this area. Um, where I get my products is usually at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's very few products that I would actually use a lot, lot of the you yes a lot of the products they carry I would never put on my hair because my hair is more white than it is black I don't have as kinky hair or thick cores. what's, the, what's the score we were talking about that there's a score on. yeah like like 4c is like the Africana this very thick coarse afro dense um, I, didn't, I didn't know there was a grading system. Yes. I should have known that since my dad is a barber. And but. I am nowhere near a 4C hair because my hair can fall and actually, you know, like that. A woman with 4C hair could not do that. Um, so my hair leans more towards Caucasian. It would be like a 1A or something like that in the grading. Like it's not even, like it's, you know. It's it just, is naturally curly though. It is very naturally curly, but even like... Why girls can have the same kind of natural That's curly true. as I do. My stepsister in law Sandy's got super kinky. Yes, exactly. Hair. So, um, but yeah, there's not there's where I grew up, we had a black actual black salon. An actual black salon. Um, I don't know if she's still there or not. Miss Nancy was her name. Mm. And um when you go in, I mean it looks like you it it's a black salon. And she sold some products, but it's hard to really find good products unless you live in a big city, just like your, just like your wife. You have to go to, to a where big, a metropolitan, the yeah, where the population is more dense with the people of your race, and which is a shame because there is a demographic. I mean, I'm not expecting there to be a whole aisle dedicated to me, but there, you know, there still needs to be more than there, than there is. Yeah, and more options. More, Thank the Lord for know. Amazon. Yeah, pretty much. But it, there's that whole, I mean, would you trust them to put it on your hair? Because oh, for yeah, black yeah. people, we have to add oil. And I have that issue. Like, I mean, if you, you can't see this on the camera, but my hairline is really dry right now because I have my hair straight and haven't applied enough oils to my hair. Um, but it, it dries out so fast. That's why we have to keep oil in our hair. That's why people are like, why is black people hair so oily? Well, because white people... Your scalp naturally gets oily the longer you don't wash it. Black people, it's the opposite. It gets drier the longer they don't wash it. So we have to constantly put oils in our hair to, to um, get it more, you know, um, hydrated. So, you know, just, you know, trusting that it's going to actually do that and not dry your hair out and break it off because of the sulfates and stuff like that is hard. But yeah, yeah. thanks for the question. Appreciate that was, it. <laughs> 
I hope I answered it. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, we don't have much here. We don't. There's have a much Sally here. Beauty Supply here. There's a beauty supply store, but yeah, but again, they cater mostly to, to the Caucasian. Mm -hmm. White folks. It's a yeah. white folks beauty supply. There is a section, but you have to really look for it, and it's not. Again, it's stuff that you could buy at Walmart, and you might as well I'll do that because it'll be cheaper mm -hmm. than at Sally's. So. Yeah. There you go. I Great feel question. her pain. I feel her pain. Great question, for Just sure. Fun Guitar. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. it. Confuses people. They're like, I thought it was a gear channel. I was like, this is Ask RNA. You ask this Ryan is an and F Angela. This is an FAQ thing. And Angela's black. Yeah. So if you want to ask a question, Ola stop being racist, this, yeah. people. Ola has an FAQ. We've been doing it longer than Ola has. And people ask him all kinds of dorky stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it's about music. Sometimes it's about... His town and who he yeah, is and his family and... What are the Swedish word of the day and, you know. Yeah. That's what it is. That's the point of it. To ask us whatever. Yeah. We should say the so thank you, Chris. country word of the day. Hoot nanny. Country <laughs> word of the day. Texan word of the day. Yeah. Because <laughs> he goes, word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't do that. Now, but now we'd be copying all that. Yeah, that's okay. It's just funny. Yeah, yeah. So, Hoot nanny. Yes. Thank you, Just Fun. Thanks, man. Next question. Terry Starks. Back again. Off of hiatus. Hashtag Falcar. Falcar. Falcor. Mm -hmm. And Katie May. And I love y'all. Sorry I've been silent for so long. Watch just didn't have the strength until now to write. So, if y'all were a young, just married couple of lollies with maybe a Nicholas baby on the way, and you're sitting around the kitchen table spitballing ideas, what business ideas would y'all think about going into? And yes, the music business is not an option. <laughs> Angela, you look stunning in this show. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> last week's show, you look stunning. I think you look stunning. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you look La stunning. He was like, last but week you were stunning. Today, last week you were today, stunning. Today, not so much. Uh, you're stunning everything. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, surely, surely we did this. Did oh, we, my did gosh. We, what did we yeah. talk about? Oh, we, we can have our own business. When we were younger, we would say, you know, if we won, like, the lottery, what would we do? And we talked about that a lot. Yeah, because we didn't have any money. We had no money. We had so negative we would just money. imagine what it was. I mean, we don't really have a lot of money now, but we were like, right. what would it it's be like, like if we could just pay off all of our If you won $30 million today, what would you do? Mm -hmm. What would we do with it? Because um, you I, could do anything you wanted to. Um, the, I think the music business came up a couple of times. Yeah, it's hard for um, me to imagine something other than that. Than that, because that has been the topic of conversation a lot. Now we had gone into like a multi-level marketing type things and growing that. And we've talked about like, what would it be like if we were at the top of the company or, you know, you know, stuff like that. But I don't think we really sat and thought, you know, what would it be like to just do something completely different? I don't know what we would have done. Man. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> um, I, I can't think of anything out because I've had of my a head lot of jobs. That we've, yeah, like but we've I, done a, we've done a lot of jobs for years. We've worked. Yeah, she's worked in the medical field. We both worked actually in the medical field. Yeah, worked in food service. Worked in sales. Worked right. in I'm probably, you know, my feet up because I'm construction. Tired. Yeah, like I've done a lot of things in my life, uh -huh. and you've done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, like none of those things would I want to go do full time. Mm -mm. <laughs> Which is why we do what we do now. So that would be no. That'd be crazy. I don't think that we really sat, because I think a lot of it was, because we were working jobs, we never thought about going into business for ourselves when we were younger. We always thought, well, if we had a lot of money, we would buy a house. We would talk about how, if we had a lot of money. Um, we didn't have a lot of money, so whenever we thought about stuff, it was always to like go on vacation. It wasn't necessarily to... What can we do with this time that we have? We I don't think we ever really s sat and thought about a business idea. Yeah. It was just, we just need to get either a better job or it was always, you know, where would we go and what would we buy? Like mm -hmm. a new car and a new house. and. Mm -hmm. It was never really, we know. didn't think a lot about starting, starting our own business necessarily. It was always like, could I get a job? Mm-hmm. What what kind of job could I get to make more money, but not yeah. what kind of business would I start? I mean, and honestly, back then, like you were saying, like when Nicholas was a baby or on the way, he was still in school. I was still in college to be a at teacher. At that time. And I was working in a hospital 
as a phlebotomist. So, you know, sometimes I thought I should become a nurse and you know, like go back to school and be a nurse. And I, we even we've, went up we've there. Talked about that. Yeah. And we've talked about that recently. It would only take two years to become a nurse. Um, Nurses make some with money. With an associate's degree. Anyways, not a bachelor's, obviously. But um, to do that. And sometimes I even spitball around the idea because I'm like, I mean, why not? Why not do it just to say that you did? Because yeah. I like that idea. But we never really sat down and thought about a business. You know, like a business. Like we run a business. Right. Um, maybe. I think if we did, it would be something like um, selling something online. Because eBay was around, wasn't it? I mm, yes. I think eBay eBay was around. No, something like that was where you sold but, things. Maybe not maybe. when Nicholas was born. Not not in ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah, two thousand like oh five oh six. Internet was still pretty much brand yeah, new. It was only yeah. three years old in ninety nine, ish. You know, like for everybody, like AOL and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, that would be tough. Maybe be a teacher. That's why, because I went to school to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. But that's not really having your own business. You're an employee of the state, which yeah, sucks. you have to. Someone's always gonna be telling you some. Telling yeah. You what to do. Man. Yeah, that's really tough. I never. Comic book store. Were. Yeah, yeah. That would have been. That would have been something like. That was right up our alley. Both yeah. of our alleys, really. <laughs> I'd be the comic book guy for the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> See. We've actually. You can touch this. You can touch this. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of rad to have, you know, because like I was into comic books a lot as a kid. You still have you know, a lot I of your I still comics. have. I haven't bought any. Like I've stopped collecting them, you know, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of the comics from when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, so that would be kind of a neat niche thing to be in the comic book industry, you mm -hmm. know, selling, you know, nerdy stuff, which I yeah. love. I mean, I say that with affection because I'm like, I was into like... You know, Mech Warrior and Battle Tech and like yeah. board games and you know just yeah. you know whatever. Yeah, but I think that would yeah, that would have been the cool. boys would love it. Yeah, that would you know been now right. the boys would be just completely in hog heaven if we had a comic book you know type hobby like hobby town hobby USA, store like a hobby yeah. town. Boys, would, boys would love that. They would have loved that. But, um, I mean, honestly, now that Nicholas is our age, whenever we got, or my age, close to when we got married, close to it, um, you know, we talk to them a lot because Aiden loves airsoft guns and rifles and, you know, anything that has to do with any kind of gun, really. Mm. And Nicholas is into models, um, Gundam mostly, yeah. um, but they both love Legos Collecting and, stuff and, and building and, them. Yes, he has, I think, a hundred now of uh, models. But we've both talked to them about starting their own business. Like, Nicholas, you could totally have a hobby store here yeah. in town because we don't have that here in Canton. We don't. And Aiden could have an airsoft store where he sold airsoft guns and made, you know, and did tournaments and did stuff like that. You can yeah. totally do that because, we, again, we don't have that even in our county. So um, we have both put that kind of bug in their ear of doing something along those lines now. Yeah. Whether they do or not, that's up to them. Yeah. But we have kind of encouraged them, like, you could do something. You could be a business owner. You could, yeah. you know, do something like that. Whatever so. you're passionate about, there's a way to figure out how to make money in that industry. Yeah. Now, you may not be in that industry the way you want to be. Like, there's a lot of guys who want to be touring musicians, playing stadiums and mm -hmm. whatever. And the, they're not that. But mm -hmm. they are sales reps for guitar companies. So right. they're still in the industry that they love, maybe not in the way they necessarily pictured it. Maybe not on stage, but... You know, what they super, super wanted, but they're still in the industry and around the industry and in it. Because every industry has a lot of aspects to it. You know, we always immediately look at the, like, the pinnacle mm -hmm. of like, I am the number one Gundam builder in the world and have won these competitions and I have a YouTube channel and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, there's the guys who just run the stores that sell the stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, in, in whatever... Whatever industry there is, but right. something probably fun, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's hard to imagine not being music because I'm pretty obsessed with music in some form or yeah. fashion. You may have noticed. Cool. <laughs> Great question, Terry. Thank you for asking. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah. Take care best, of yourself. Best wishes. Take care of yourself. 
Final question. Yay! <laughs> Bubba Fang, thank you for the response to the kids who can slash can't catch on. Helps me and the kids I'm involved with. Big news. I'm back on the worship team. I'm feeling up to it, but it's hard not playing a few years as I've dealt with some illness. Mm -hmm. Man, I can, I can sympathize with you. Uh, questions. Do you have students who also play in church? Or maybe Nicholas, who may play or thought about starting a band. Mm. Right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so we teach a lot of students, beginners who and intermediates who love music and a lot of different backgrounds, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we do have some students who play on their local church music team or worship team. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two, and of course you've had some that sang, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Um, that's not the majority. Mm -mm. Um, not at all. But there there are a them. few, yeah. Mm -hmm. And which for me is easy because I it's, it's kind of weird. Kids come in and like, I want to play this Metallica song. I'm like, okay. Because <laughs> I know that this. one. I have yeah. played that one. Yeah. And then I have to see some kids come in like, hey, we're playing this song at church. Can you teach it to me? I'm like, I can do that. Yes. I have we've played done that. that. So Many I, times. You know, decades of playing in a church as mm -hmm. a church musician and then also decades yeah. of playing Metallica. <laughs> it's a balance. So, and not as much country stuff, but I have learned some country tunes over the years. Yes, you have. You I'm know. proud of you. You're welcome, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's weird. I grew up as a kid before I knew I was into music. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of country music played around the house. And well, on yeah, the radio. Just yeah, I grew up in the grew up on the ranch and on the farm, you know. Yes. So there was like, so I I've heard a lot of country music in my life. Right. I was into as a little kid. I was really liked it, you know. Yeah. So as I got older, is when the rock stuff was like, what are they doing on that guitar? Why does that guitar sound like that? I've never yeah, heard how that. How did they accomplish this? Yeah. So, yeah. but, um, yeah, and that's fun. It's, actually, it's kind of fun. I sort of enjoy it when a mm -hmm. kid comes in like, can we learn this country song? I'm like, sure, let's do it. Because for me, it's just outside of my yeah. uh, normal. The guitar playing is not necessarily, they're not bringing me, you know, crazy, right. you know, Chet Ack and stuff or, you yeah. know, Roy, what's his name? Clark. Roy, Roy Clark tunes, like. Or, you know, Brad yeah. Paisley mm -hmm. stuff. It's Especially all... when he's on the banjo. It's yeah. Like... Yeah. They're not bringing me the, teach that. the crazy <laughs> stuff. It's like, hey, can you teach me this Jeff Luma song? <laughs> like, yeah. well, we can learn it, but it's going to take a while. You're right. Know? But, you know, basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Basic things. Yeah. You know? But I think a lot of our country country kids, for the most part, I'm not saying all of them, um, do play in church or will play in church. Yeah, yeah. And that's usually the connection with country music. Not so much the Metallica kids. Yeah, so, yeah. But, um, the diehard metal kids aren't as, don't play yeah, in church as much. A lot of the country like, kids will probably play in church. Except for Mason. Yeah. Mason, he's super metal, but he plays in his church quite a bit. Yeah. It's kind of funny. He That's reminds, what I'm saying. Like, he reminds not me all, of me. Not all will be like that, but they're, you know, for the most part, the connection. Yeah, yeah. Country and Christian music will go more hand in hand than metal and Christian yeah, music. Yeah, gospel and so, southern um, gospel. And, yeah, because you know. a lot of country artists do bridge that, you know, go over because there's money in it. They'll do a gospel album. Um, Elvis did a gospel album. Yes, it's like his, his best selling album of all time yeah. was his gospel album. How Great Thou Art. That's one of his yeah. top selling songs. Money. Because I mean, he did a great job because he, he grew did. up that way. That, but he that's did. his heritage. Nicholas plays. In the church band. Yeah, yeah, he will. Yeah, and he has helped Ryan out at the Methodist Church. Uh-huh. And he plays pretty regularly at a local church that I preach at twice a week. So, twice uh, a month. Twice a month, not week. Sorry, my brain. That would be a lot. I haven't slept. I'm tired. Yeah, we, we got um, in at, what time did we get home last night? Like, I mean, this two, morning. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. this morning we got in from our, our date. Yeah. Um. So, a little sleepy, and then got up at 8. Got up at 8. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, Nicholas will play. Um, I mean, really, honestly, he played, plays whenever we ask or even sometimes he, mm -hmm. you know, wants to. Yeah. Yeah. He has he's a, not super obsessed with music. Though. Like, he loves no, to listen to it. Yeah. He's always listening to music, but he's he not. He loves to listen to it. He loves finding new music that he's like, oh, I, I listened to this the other day. Or he heard it on a, the, in the background of a movie that he, because he loves movies too. 
So him and Aiden love soundtracks and movie background music for their video games. They're, they will spend an hour just picking the music, the background music for their video games. Um, so uh, I guess I missed my, I missed my appointment. Oh, you got time. You said just before noon. Okay. Um, but yeah, they'll spend hours playing, you know, listening to music. And um, But I don't think he'll ever start a band. I don't think that's where his heart is, really. I don't think He's he not really cares about, that. about that kind of stuff. He likes to play and he likes the outlet of playing, but it's not his heart. His heart is Gundams and movie making and, you know. Stop motion and animation. Yeah. And, yeah. And the yeah. artistic part of it. He's obsessed with that way more than he's obsessed with playing the bass. Yeah. But, you know, it's the bass. So. Yeah, but he what does do? But he does play. And he does really well, you know. Well, he does. Yeah. He mm -hmm. picks it up really fast when I show him something. He'll pick it up really quickly. I'm like, son, if you were obsessed with music, you'd be phenomenal. Right. But he's not. But he's not. And, and that's, that's okay. okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. And Aiden's the same way. Aiden can pick stuff up so fast, so stinking fast. And he just gets it in his mind. Um, he'll get frustrated with himself, but if he takes the time to push past it, he's really good. He's obsessed with piano right now. He won't he play. He doesn't I, want to play. He wants to I watch think he plays movies. without us being there. You think I think so? Yeah, I think he does. He's in there tinkering on mm -hmm. the piano. Mm -hmm. Oh, a stinker. He probably is. Because he was doing that for a while, but then we made a big deal about it and he stopped. So I think he does it when we're not it's a at home. Secret piano obsession. Yeah, because he play he watches videos for like hours of this guy playing. You know that has the chords coming down in different color patterns, and they play like the theme to, you know, Zelda or something yeah. like that. Or, um, but yeah, I don't know what we're. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Church kids, yes, we do yeah. have kids Got who play in church. We do, and Nicholas does play in church, but he doesn't want to start a band. Not necessarily. Not that, I mean, we haven't asked him. He might. And people have asked him, do you think he'd want to play with us? I'm like, no. No. <laughs> he doesn't. Because he doesn't like to be on stage. He loves to play and he'll stand, if he can stand in the background and sit down where no one's staring at him, he's T fine. Typical bass player. He well, would be a great player. studio bass player. Someone who yeah. can just show up in a room and you're like, can you just play this line for me? Does he's it like, need the lime line? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and he could just leave and no one's staring at him. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates people yeah. staring at him. Yeah. You know, and being in front of a group of people. He doesn't like want to be the center of attention. But it's hard to miss all. him when he walks in the room because he's a giant. Yes. It reminds me, I got tickled last night watching Star Wars whenever they were at that festival. Uh -huh. And they're like, you gotta keep, we got to keep low. And he's like, Chewie, that means you. And Chewbacca like hunches down. Because, you know, obviously Chewbacca is going to stand out in the middle of the yeah, crowd. Yeah, he's like a seven foot walking, tall. Like, you know, and I was like, that is so Nicholas. I was like, Nicholas, that means you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Obviously, you're going to see me. More. You know, more. and he'd have to kind of bend almost completely over to make him even just like a normal height. Walk on your knees. Exactly. I just got tickled because <laughs> I was that like, was oh, that's, that's right. like Nicholas. I thought about that too. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the question, Boba Fang. And that's it for the questions for this week. Thank you guys so much for asking. And thank Yay! you for all the comments. You know, there's a lot of comments from last week as well. There so is. So appreciate that, especially the positive ones. Yeah. <laughs> We've been getting a few more negative <laughs> ones, but that's what happens. If more people show up, there's a higher percentage of buttholes that are going to show up too. Exactly. So. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's still 97% non-buttholes. Buttholes. So we, we come out loud and proud. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys so much. Uh, if you have a question for next week, please leave it below in the comment section of this video and we will try to answer it next week. Secret hashtag of the day. If you watch this whole video beginning to end, does wonders for our runtime mm -hmm. and YouTube says, oh man, people watch this for 30 minutes straight. That's Let's nice. push that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So just let it play. You know, that helps out if you did. Uh, secret hashtag of the day. Well, she said something earlier that I was like, oh. That'd be a great win. Oh, oh my gosh. I forgot that was, what. We said a lot of stuff. I think it was during Just Fun Guitars question or answer, but oh, I was like, About oh. black hair? It's like, okay, white man. Or something. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but there was something. All right, so secret hashtag of the day. If you type that in with your question or comment below to show us that you watched the whole stinking video what what should it be oh my gosh i don't even know i was just kind of looking over the questions and thinking hmm <laughs> i should have said i should have written it down in the middle of when it first came to my mind i should have written it but i didn't yeah. but we'll just do it this way all right so hashtag comic guy 
Hashtag comment guy. That is the secret hashtag of the day. If you watch the whole thing, slip that in there with your comment or your question. We'll know you watched the whole thing. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation of musicians. That's right. Coming up. <laughs> Learning Metallica songs. Yeah, yeah. And songs about Jesus. <laughs> and songs about songs Jesus. Songs about Jesus. <laughs> Yes, and some Lady Sings the Blues. <laughs> lady Sings the Blues. I need to go listen to that album. I know. I haven't in ages. It'll bring back so you many. You start crying. I might. I don't, I don't know. know if I want to cry right now. I'm all cried out. I need to go back and listen to that Stevie Wonder album. Last couple of weeks, I'm all cried out. So mm -hmm. I don't. I don't need. Maybe you should listen to blues when you're sad. Yeah. Or maybe it makes it worse. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll mm. find out. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys next video. We gotta go. Bye. Bye.